welcome back to another experiential video. Throughout human's history, thirst for exploration has led us closer to many unanswered questions. From deep sea to land and far beyond the edge of space. We've been exploring space for advancing scientific research, prestige and perhaps, most importantly, exploring the unknown. The year 1957 marked the inception of Space Age, with the launch of the Soviet satellite Sputnik. The following year, US government established NASA in 1958. Think for a minute, what a different world it would be if Explorer 1 never happened. Say Vanguard successfully launched in December, the Explorer 1 may have been turned off. There may have been less pressure to create a separate space agency, so we might not have NASA. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of chance involved in all this. We all know about NASA's space work. Most recently in news, the Mars rover, which is almost the size of a regular car and part of NASA's Mars 2020 mission, safely landed on Mars on February 2021. But many of us are unaware how NASA is involved in different technological innovations that we have to credit them for. Believe it or not, they are a part of our everyday life. Did you know the creation of baby formula is thanks to NASA's algae research? They have a significant role and extensive research in space technologies that rolls down for us using it today. For example, camera sensors. NASA's scientists had carried out extensive research to reduce the size of camera space missions. Now, the same technology, CMOS Active Pixel Sensor, are used in today's various smartphones and GoPro camera. And yes, let's not forget mentioning beautiful images from their missions, exploring the universe and our home planet. Today, NASA has successfully launched over 200 crewed flights. However, sending humans into space and getting them back safely is an exponentially challenging and a delicate task. It all starts with selecting astronaut candidates from a diverse pool of applicants. NASA mentions on their website more than 12,000 people applied to be an astronaut between March 2nd and March 31st, 2020 alone. And certainly, all the people behind the astronauts making their jobs easier, from planning, manufacturing, to getting the technology, spacecrafts, mission control ready. By 1961, Soviets Yuri Gagarin became the first person to fly in space. Immediately, everyone thought, well, they're now able to really send their, their military machines around the world up above who was not going to be in danger. The birth of Apollo program took place when America feared of losing the space race with the Soviet Union. Thereafter, many Apollo missions had taken inception, with few missions facing mishaps along the way. Imagine a crew to be faced with an accident in space. Human life can be lost in the process of pushing limits to know the unknown and costing billions of dollars. Apollo 13 faced a similar challenge in April of 1970 with the three astronauts crew who almost lost their lives. It's no less than a sci-fi or a thriller adventure. In this episode, let's take a look at how they training presence of mind and on-spot innovation with strong will to overcome the unthinkable got them back to Earth safely. Nineteen sixty one, US President John F. Kennedy had challenged his nation to land an astronaut on the moon by the end of the decade. With this timeline, parallel moon race between the Soviet's unmanned Luna 15 and Apollo 11 were nearing their climax. Luna 15 crashed into the moon on July 21st of 1969, 
On the contrary, the same day, Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked the moon. With the title, The First Man on the Moon, under its belt, NASA launched Apollo 12 in the same year successfully. The story of our episode today began 50 years ago, in the year 1970. Apollo 13 was the seventh crewed mission to be added to Apollo program and the third mission planned to land on the moon. The objective of the Apollo 13 mission was to land near Framaro, which was believed to have more material due to impact in that area, forming into a crater. It could provide valuable information about the moon. Apollo 13 consisted of three men crew, just like the previous two Apollo missions. Mission commander, Jim Lovell, aged 42 years old at the time, with extensive experience with Gemini 7, 12, and Apollo 8. He was the world's most traveled astronaut for that time. Command module pilot, Jack Swigert, 38 years old, a last-minute replacement for Ken Mattingly, who had been exposed to measles. Jack Swigert was a specialist in Apollo Command module and experience with Apollo 7 as a support crew member. Lunar module pilot Fred Hayes, 35 years old, working with NASA as a civilian research pilot for several years and experienced as a backup lunar module pilot for Apollo 8 and 11. Apollo spacecraft was an incredible machine, designed to provide astronauts with required air, food, and a sense of home in the void of space. Apollo 13 was launched from Kennedy Space Center, with its mission control all the way in Houston, Texas. The spacecraft is split into three parts. Firstly, the command module. This is where the three men spend most of their time from liftoff to landing and during the trip to and from the moon. The lunar module serving as a base for two astronauts on the moon. Part of it would be left behind and used as a launch pad. And lastly, the service module which serves as a storehouse containing engines necessary to enter and leave lunar orbit. It also accommodates fuel cells liquid fuel and other equipment, most importantly contains oxygen tanks. During Apollo 13 launch on April 11 of 1970 at 2.13 pm Eastern Standard Time, the excitement and worldwide interest was quite low and had become a bit of a bore for the average American compared to the Apollo 11 and 12 which made moon landing seem so plausible. Having started their voyage to the moon, the crew had just completed their live telecast, with none of the major TV networks broadcasting it. Little did anyone know, minutes after the live broadcast, a malfunction would happen and get its nation and the world's attention, keeping them on edge for every update they received from Apollo 13. For now, everything largely is going according to the plan with all boosters functioning. Almost about two and a half hours in, with a distance of 2200 kilometers from Earth, astronauts activate the third stage, reigniting the engine to provide with the final boost needed towards the moon. The crew must perform 180 degrees turnaround. The command module must dock with the lunar module and pull it out, leaving the spent rocket behind. These procedures were carried out efficiently with the help of on-board computers on each module. Now, with 13 hours clocked in, they were on the way coasting towards the moon. The Apollo crew were settling down for a 10-hour rest period with a distance of 117,000 kilometers from Earth. Apollo 13 is around 327,000 kilometers from Earth 
almost 80% of the way to the womb. Creer has gone live on TV camera, with Lovell taking the lead. Hayes follows up the conversation with some practical jokes and shows around the lunar module, and later with one or two inputs from Jack. The live telecast ended at 55 hours 46 minutes. Around the same time, about 7 minutes after the live telecast, Jack turns on a switch sending power to a pair of fans to stir oxygen tanks 1 and 2 located in the service module. Unfortunately, the power passing through the Teflon insulated wires had already been damaged prior to flight during ground testing by existing. Now, with these wires exposed and close enough to spark, with pure oxygen in tanks at high pressure, tank number 2 explodes with a bang. At this moment, onboard computer restarts itself due to sudden drop in electric current voltage caused by the explosion and triggers master alarm. This is where the legendary line was reported to mission control by Lowell. Down on Earth, mission control was taken in by a surprise and could not believe what they were seeing. The caution and warning system lights indicated that two of the three fuel cell units that supply primary electrical power, oxygen for breathing and drinking water had been knocked out. It was realized that there were multiple catastrophic failures being reported by the crew. With the situation unfolding, at the same time, engineers and the whole team are working tirelessly to come up with some good ideas to control the situation. It was advised from Mission Control to Apollo 13 to cut down on power consumption and maintain only primary systems. For trouble, a late report says the spacecraft now is operating on battery power alone. All unnecessary equipment is being turned off. Lowell glances out of the left window and confirms gas of some sort venting out. Well, it looks to me you're looking out the uh, hatch that we are venting something. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Back on Earth, to the engineer's dismay, remaining fuel cell number two was still working, but was ruptured, leaking oxygen and was going to run out in about three hours. At that very moment, the crew knew that they were in big trouble. But with their training and presence of mind, they did not panic. On the contrary, they were working on correcting their trajectory and troubleshooting the fuel cell. Well, essentially, uh, it took a, took a while for all that to sink in uh, that it dawned on me that we were in very serious, serious trouble. Now, the Apollo 13 is at a distance of 330,000 kilometers from Earth, and with fast depleting oxygen, landing on Moon was out of question, and the Moon mission was abandoned. Meanwhile, Mission Control is looking towards an alternate plan to swing around the Moon using the lunar module with its power systems and bringing the men back home. We are about 70 hours from home and uh, we think we have uh, uh, the situation in control. We've projected the uh, consumables as I've described and uh, we have a plan for carrying out the rest of the mission, but uh, uh, there is gonna be no relaxation at all. One hour has elapsed from the time of explosion. As the news of the disaster unfolds, it's spreading like wildfire. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. From major to small news channels and radio stations picking up the story. Millions of people around the globe remain glued to see and hear any small update as the story unfolded. Now, it's been almost 1 hour 30 minutes after the explosion. The crew is still 3 days away from Earth. Mission Control decides and confirms that the crew should use Lunar Module as lifeboat. With good news for all, it has untapped oxygen 
water, and electric power to support the crew. The crew moved into the lunar module. This module was designed to act as a base on moon with no seats. The biggest downside, perhaps, it was only designed for two men for two days on moon. Now it had to accommodate three men for four days coasting towards Earth. A huge task, all hands on deck. The question still remains, how do we get the men home safely? It was decided to use free return trajectory. It meant going around the moon using its gravity and swing back towards Earth without the need for much propulsion during the process. However, the conditions inside the lunar module were challenging. To conserve energy and resources, the crew had to face temperatures few degrees above freezing. Adding to that, they were dehydrated and sleep deprived. Now, with lack of water and limitations on disposing urine bags, Fred Hayes developed UTI and kidney infection. At this point, the men were mentally and physically exhausted. Troubles never ended there. With lunar module supporting three men, removal of dangerous levels of carbon dioxide had become a major problem. Our crew was suffocating. We had to find ways to remove the carbon dioxide so the crew wouldn't suffer from uh, CO2 poisoning. To tackle this, engineers on ground devised a makeshift adapter scheme, which included 13 steps, letting the crew know how to attach the cartridges from the command module to the lunar module houses by just using plastic bags, cardstock, and duct tape. It was a massive success. We never had discussed the possibility of uh, not surviving or getting back to the Earth. It was probably in all of our minds, uh, but uh, uh, we were uh, working hard to figure out what we had to work with and, and what we had to do to get back. By now, the world was gripped and following the updates of Apollo 13. Morning of April 15, Apollo 13 entered the region of gravitational influence of Earth at a distance of 348,000 kilometers. The lunar module trajectory had to be manually refined with the help of its descent engine. With the temperatures reaching to 3 degrees Celsius inside, condensation was all around. It was feared the electrical system could have been affected. The whole instrument panel was covered with water, and of course I knew that there was water probably behind the panel on all the wiring harnesses, and so we worried about electric shorts. We were virtually going down rows and pushing in circuit breakers. We figured the best we could do is we started down a row and started smelling. You could smell an electric short. We'd back up and pull some out and hope we could quickly isolate, which was the culprit. The crew powered on the command module. For everyone's relief, everything booted up. The crew jettisoned the service module. The astronauts then moved out of the lunar module and back into command module. And there's one whole side of that big draft missing. Is that right? So the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. It's really a mess. Man, that's unbelievable. They jettisoned the lunar module that had got them so far, pushing it beyond its designed capacity. The command module with the astronauts inside continued onward. It was glowing in the sky as it entered Earth's atmosphere. It was expected to have communications blackout due to ionized air around the craft while its entry. The world was anxiously watching and listening to what is going to unfold. But then, the words, OK Joe, were heard. Later, the crew deployed their parachutes. Prayers from around the world were answered. And to everyone's relief, they had done it. They splashed down into the Pacific Ocean on April 17 at 1.07 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
The round trip took 142 hours, 54 minutes, 41 seconds. All three men went home safe and had no lasting ill effects from their ordeal. Apollo 13 mission gave several learning lessons and experience for future Apollo missions. It has gone down into the history for all to read and share to what can be achieved with one's determination. Today, the Apollo 13 Command Module Odyssey can be seen at the Kansas Cosmosphere and Space Center. That's about it. If you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing. You can find our other video links in the description. Feel free to watch them. You might find them interesting. For now, you've been watching Experiential Lit. Thanks for watching. We will catch you in the next episode.